Our presentation is titled Towards Community Building in Winston Green. All semester, the Graduate Architecture and Urbanism Studio has worked to develop plans that seek to urbanize and densify the area known as Winston Green, which is located near the cities of Birmingham and Sandwell in the UK. The goal of the project is to create a vision for urbanism with a stronger sense of place in Winston Green, which is home to a marginalized and largely immigrant population. We have been working with Ash and Angie Barker, who are pioneering urban activists living in Winston Green. They and their family occupy the manse of the Church of England's Bishop Latimer Church, which is an important historic symbol in their neighborhood, and they have turned it into a kind of social hub for promoting community and inclusivity. Ash and Angie are building relationships in their neighborhood and advocating for placemaking in hopes of being agents for shalom in this region. Ash and Angie are working with local leaders and agencies like the YMCA to address a housing shortage and share ideas about the potential for a flourishing community. We hope to serve them by providing a vision for urbanism that starts to address some of the social issues troubling this neighborhood through increasing housing density, strengthening social infrastructure, and giving people access to public space. The work being presented consists of urban plans for three neighborhoods within the area of Winston Green that we developed in the first part of our semester. Each student has since chosen a particular building to design within these urban plans and, in doing so, has considered the principles of well-connected and inclusive urbanism at a smaller scale. Our project in Winston Green is located outside of Birmingham, which is northwest of London. Birmingham is the second most populous city in the UK after London and is connected to London by regional rail. Winston Green is connected to the city of Birmingham with a light rail that runs from Birmingham to West Bromwich and Wolverhampton beyond. It is important to note that Winston Green is not a jurisdiction with formal boundaries, but rather an area with informal boundaries that are known by its residents. Within our project, we have identified three neighborhoods. Our scope continued to expand as more information about the future of these neighborhoods became available to us. The Black Patch neighborhood is centered around the historic Black Patch Park and the area referred to as Winston Green. This is the neighborhood in which Ash lives. The Soho Loop neighborhood is centered on the present location of the Birmingham City Hospital. The All Saints neighborhood includes the grounds of the HM Prison Birmingham and the former All Saints Mental Hospital. There are several main challenges and problems that we sought to address through our urban plans. There is an overabundance of infrastructure in this area. There are many rail lines and canals that create barriers in some places and leave pockets of land that are not well connected. We see the potential to take advantage of the canals as an amenity. Winston Green is considered a place between places because it overlaps two jurisdictions, Sandwell and the city of Birmingham. There is difficulty in knowing who will be responsible for or take action for the blocks and streets at these edges. The region has a low population density and areas of underused land. Especially since these neighborhoods are adjacent to the light rail stop to the north, it would be beneficial to build density around it and make it more useful as an amenity. The existing large blocks contribute to low permeability, which means that there are few choices for cars and pedestrians. The safety of the park and other public spaces, like the towpath along the canals, is a big concern because they are currently not well framed with building frontage. The institutions that occupy large plots of land in these neighborhoods, including the foundry, the hospital, and the prison, all have a life cycle. The process of their phasing out has been a challenge to our planning. The site of the Soho Foundry currently has existing industrial uses and buildings of historic value. The Birmingham City Hospital is relocating to a new development across the canal, which is shown here in yellow, but they plan to keep some of the buildings on the existing campus active. Toward the end of our planning, we were informed that the prison, which is the link between the Black Patch and Soho Loop neighborhoods, is likely to be closed in the near future. There is an opportunity to redevelop these plots of land to increase the density of dwelling units and to use the land more efficiently to take advantage of the nearby amenities. We also see an opportunity to make the historic buildings in these neighborhoods legible, including the Soho Foundry on the edge of the park and the Victorian buildings that are currently part of the prison, including the historic All Saints Mental Hospital. The Winston Green area has a rich history that should be noted and celebrated. 
It is said that the English Industrial Revolution began in Winston Green at the Soho Foundry, which is right on the perimeter of Black Patch Park. There has been a history of travelers, or gypsies, staying in this area. It is even speculated that Charlie Chaplin was born in Black Patch Park. Bishop Latimer, to whom the historic church is dedicated, was an advocate for greenways and for the rights of public access to land and nature. Some of these structures are protected and are shown here in purple. The buildings shown in yellow are interesting buildings with character that we considered and marked for potential adaptive reuse. In order to promote the thriving of these neighborhoods, one of our goals is to increase social infrastructure. There is especially a need for additional grocery stores and commercial uses within a quarter mile pedestrian walking radius of these areas. The existing commercial streets are darkened gray on this map and pedestrian circles are shown from the primary sources of transit, the light rail stop to the north and a major bus stop to the south. The two streets with existing commercial activity are connected by Winston Green Road, which is here highlighted in yellow. It passes through our areas of redevelopment, giving us an opportunity to aid in connectivity. The light rail stop to the northeast of Black Patch Park connects to Birmingham. Black Patch is the neighborhood with the best access to public transit, as it has both light rail and bus routes. The Soho Loop area has less access to transit, as it only has bus routes. The freight railway tracks create a barrier in some places. We noted that it would be beneficial to consider the canal and the towpath along it as forms of transit because it's only a short walk or boat ride to Birmingham. We analyzed the existing densities of the Black Patch and Soho Loop neighborhoods within 800 meters surrounding their primary transit stops. The existing net densities, which are calculated including only developed blocks and not including the large areas dedicated to infrastructure, are about 45 dwelling units per hectare. For reference, a hectare is about two and a half acres. This is a little bit low, as the densities needed to support a light rail stop or frequent transit stops are more like 50 to 60 dwelling units per hectare. The large amount of infrastructure in these neighborhoods, as well as plots of underutilized land, contributes to the low density. We estimated that in order to support the kind of growth we envision for these two neighborhoods, over 2,500 dwelling units will need to be added to each. To formulate some guidelines regarding how density can be increased, we developed a form-based code. A form-based code is an alternative to a conventional zoning code, and it can be used to ensure development patterns that are pedestrian-oriented, walkable, and mixed-use, while maintaining the unique character of the place. Its goals align with the goals of Birmingham and Sandwell for sustainability, mixed tenure housing options, and connectivity. The form-based code is not based on land use like typical zoning codes, but instead on transects and building types. A transect is a zone on a spectrum of natural to urban core that describes the intensity and physical character of a street or group of blocks. Based on the six standard transect zones, we determined that the zones which most belong in Winston Green are T3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5. We summarized each transect in terms of building heights and setbacks to define the overall character of that place. We studied the context and surrounding neighborhoods in order to develop street types and building types with local character to be used as building blocks, and then created a catalog describing their typical characteristics. This is the resulting regulating plan, which defines which transect and street types are to be used in which areas. The form-based code and our urban plans allow for and encourage a diversity in building type and residential unit type to support inclusive housing in these neighborhoods. This diagram illustrates how a street or block can be composed of varying residential units that are indistinguishable when viewed from the street. By providing a variety of types, we can accommodate and include a diverse population, which adds to our vision of thriving in Winston Green. 
We will now present our urban plans for the three neighborhoods in more detail. The first area of the Winston Green development that we are going to look at is the area surrounding Black Patch Park. In Black Patch Park, we are really hoping to establish a mixed tenure, inclusive housing uh, with an appropriate density and mixed use to enable a community to thrive and flourish. One thing that will help in creating this sort of community is establishing an appropriate density in certain areas. As you can see in this transect map, we have proposed higher densities in the dark purple nearest to the light rail stop and continuing down towards the canal to take advantage of historically significant amenities such as Black Patch Park and the Birmingham Canal. You can see in the black box the current light rail stop and in the red a high density neighborhood right adjacent to the stop and the green the proposed greenway. Finally we are also proposing to surround the park to keep it safe and able to be used. We have broken up the Black Patch Park area into separate little neighborhoods. This neighborhood is adjacent to the light rail stop and you can, it's connected to the stop by A4040 and Parrot Street. Along with our new greenway, that follows the brook. Here's a plan oblique of what that may look like. You can see the relationship the neighborhood has to the light rail stop, the brook running through, and its connection to Black Patch Park. In a more recent alternative iteration, we increase the density more with interior blocks that provide for live work residences located in conjunction with a newly established market. In close proximity to the train and most of the housing. This iconic entry will also invite prominence for a future YMCA building. To the right is a view of the marketplace with market shops on either side of the building. Our next neighborhood is Hillside Village. This neighborhood is crucial in establishing inclusive housing and a working neighborhood with mixed uses and places of worship not currently represented. The topography of the hill invites a sloping plaza that can be accessed axially by foot from Bishop Latimer Church. This is a plan oblique of what that may look like. Bishop Latimer Church is currently located here with quick access to the neighborhood and a proposed mosque. At the end of the road that goes down the slope of the hillside area, there is a plaza fronted by a mosque whose minaret pro provides a visible monument for wayfinding. Due to its location at the intersection of two streets, everyone in the area can access it easily. And this hillside corner building resolves an acute angle in the block. It includes a first floor cafe for quaint neighborhood friendly commerce with 16 flats above. To commemorate the area, the building has a base relief sculpture 
of the James Watt engine on the building's freeze. The neighborhoods surrounding the park will play the most important role in park safety and use. Along with the current foundry, hopefully converted to a museum and foundry tavern, we've included fire and police stations. We have established housing and an elementary school. In this corner building, the building is located at the convergence of four streets at the edge of the park and terminates the view of the street to the north. The building is mixed use and activates the street on all three principal faces. A curved pergola defines the main entrance to the ground floor bakery and a similar larger pergola across the street establishes a formal entrance into Black Patch Park. The elementary school is located on the south entry to Black Patch Park on intersection of Foundry Lane and Kitchener Street. The school complex and community center occupied the corner lot and the space between the two buildings creates a private courtyard for students. Here's a view of some proposed homes fronting the park. The park front mixed use, mixed tenure, passage building frames the south side of Black Patch Park. In addition to providing an inviting path into the neighborhood beyond, users and residents provide eyes on the park at all hours. Here's a view of the Soho Bend with the current Soho Foundry Tavern adjacent to the park and some of the park homes beyond. Here's a perspective looking out towards some new proposed buildings from the park. Once density and necessary cultural amenities have been established, let's add some mixed use and take advantage of the jewels that are characteristic of the history and story of Winston Green. We will establish a plaza around some existing viaducts underneath the rail line and build a neighborhood along the canal. This is a plan of an area that used to be called the Soap Bowl. Our new Soap Bowl introduces mixed-use buildings for commercial and cultural amenities, all located along a greenway that continues with the uncovered brook extending from Black Patch toward the canal. The placement of buildings in this plaza aid in defining two connected plaza spaces on either side of the area's historic viaduct. There are two bays of the viaduct that have been intentionally left open to provide both a visual connection and physical connection between the plazas. The northern plaza is smaller and will be utilized by the adjacent local art gallery, brewery, and coffee house. The southern plaza is larger in scale to highlight the new library, which is on axis with the connection to the canal. The viaduct infill and northeast corner building of the plaza enclose and activate these two sides of the large plaza. The viaduct infill turns a piece of infrastructure from the Industrial Revolution that poses an urban safety risk into a pub and microbrewery that opens up two public spaces to the north and south and activates the space into the night. The proposed Black Patch Public Library acts as an anchor for the southern neighborhood as it stands with one face on the large public square and the other on the terminating axis of two new main streets. Its formal entry includes a grand stair and elevated terrace to deal with sloping topography and create a formal entrance for the plaza. Here's a view of another proposed mixed-use building along the plaza square. This corner of grocery, located just north of Confluence Park, our next neighborhood, acts as a wayfinding device. Its tower draws people from the north end of Winston Green to its southernmost neighborhood, Confluence Park. Here's another view of what surrounding the viaducts with some mixed-use buildings may look like. 
Here is a view of our final neighborhood, Confluence Park. As the brook extends, it reaches the southernmost neighborhood, which actually starts to connect the existing housing on either side of the canal. By continuing this offshoot road off of Wellington and Victoria Streets, the lower end of the hill has housing in small blocks. The ground held back with a retaining wall. As the road climbs, the hill houses along the canal terrace up. There is a mid-hill terrace that leads up to the plaza on top of the hill. This is a view of a proposed Mary Hill Hotel that sits upon the south end of Mary Hill. It becomes a destination along the north edge of the Birmingham Canal. The Hilltop Hotel gives views of downtown Birmingham in the distance, and its tower provides a landmark for people navigating Winston Green. Finally, in our 25-year plan, we have achieved a density of 69 dwelling units per hectare and added a total of at least 1,885 dwelling units. In this phase, we'll continue to increase housing and extend it into underutilized areas, especially if some of these industrial uses will eventually phase out. We also extend the greenway from the park into an urban campus for a proposed trade school. This is a proposal for the Bolton Heath neighborhood. We want to adaptively reuse much of the industrial building fabric and infill with new buildings to increase the density and add mixed use, as well as add some cultural amenities such as a trade school and plaza. This is a view of what the Bolton Heath neighborhood might look like. With the plaza fronting a trade school, possibly an informal market along the park, and an extension of the greenway that provides clear path and entry into this neighborhood. This view of the whole park is a view of our intended goal, to face Black Patch Park as something to be cherished, increase connectivity through and around the park, all the while establishing mixed tenure and inclusive housing with the appropriate density and mixed use to enable the community to thrive and flourish. The All Saints neighborhood is named for the former All Saints Mental Hospital, which was established in 1850 and faces the large expanse of park to the east. This and the cruciform building in the center of the plan are historic Victorian buildings, currently used by the prison. Our plan proposes that these buildings be adaptively reused after the closing of the prison. Because of the need for schools in this area, we have redeveloped the blocks that are currently the grounds of the prison into a neighborhood that supports a high school with a focus on media and film. A school such as this may draw people and families to the neighborhood and has the potential to become a central aspect of the community. This school occupies the corner of a prominent intersection. The main east-west through street, known as Lodge Road and Foundry Road, has heavy traffic and a number of bus stops. The A4040, or Winston Green Road, runs north-south and connects the two existing commercial streets and crosses the canal to the Soho Loop neighborhood. At this corner and around the historic prison, we planned school buildings like an administration center, a gallery, an auditorium, and a cafeteria. These structures create enclosed courtyards for the school's use. A variety of housing types are provided close to the school for faculty and families in a location that will be desirable due to its proximity to the canal and other added mixed-use amenities. 
There are apartments surrounding a plaza, flats facing the canal, and row houses in a lower density area to the west. We chose to restore a historic street that is currently part of the parking lot for the prison. This reconnects Winston Green Road and Wellington Street as they used to be and reestablishes an axis on the historic building. A new diagonal street leading to the canal crossing will relieve some of the traffic at the main intersection. We surrounded the back of the All Saints building, which is not as attractive as its front with mixed use and hotel buildings, in hopes that the All Saints building and the park can be used as an event center. The adjacent plaza to the south responds to the existing pedestrian bridge crossing the canal to the Soho Loop neighborhood. On the west side of the plan, which is currently parking and other prison buildings, we designed housing blocks with inner alleys and parking courts, creating an interior layer of housing that is more private. New mixed use buildings front the existing green space. The transect map describes a higher transect and density in the blocks to be used as an urban campus by the school, along with other mixed-use buildings. The western blocks have a lower density and more housing than commercial uses. This 3D view shows the whole neighborhood, highlighting the public face of the school along the main east-west road. This perspective drawing captures the view down the new diagonal street, which terminates on a civic building in the plaza. This view is at the corner of the main intersection. The school administration building with a tower is on the left, and in the center, a passage building leading to a court with housing on the interior of the block. The Soho Loop neighborhood is a redevelopment of the currently located Midlands Metro Metropolitan Hospital, which is really an interesting site. It's located southeast from Black Patch Park. It's on the way to Birmingham, and it is surrounded by canals, which as a result causes it to be more of an island than anything else. The canal to the northeast and wrapping around to the northwest in sort of the organic nature is the old canal. And then to the south, the, the straight canal is, is the newer canal that was developed during the Industrial Revolution. And these are really amenities for the site. Um, and our hope was to redevelop this neighborhood to really take advantage of those amenities as well as to connect the neighborhood to the neighboring context um, which is the All Saints neighborhood directly to the north and uh, further uh, to the Black Patch Park neighborhood further to the northwest. The neighborhood is also uh, terminated by some major highways A457 to the south a4040 to the west, which actually leads directly up to the Black Patch Park. And Western Road on the east, which leads to the Jewelry Quarter. Within these boundaries, there's currently located the Midlands Metropolitan Hospital, which is a rambling building of additions dated pre-World War I. It's an extensive property of clinics and hospitals uh, connected over time by corridors and it really is home to a sea of parking, which does not make use of the, the space well and it really uh, further isolates the property. This is the current proposed five-year plan for the Soho Loop neighborhood. Some of the goals were to really take advantage of the amenities of the canal to really front that, uh, that space and to make it safer for people to use the existing footpath that goes around so that um, people would make use of that and as a result would further connect these neighborhoods. And so as you can see to the north, there's some, some orange 
buildings proposed. These would be mixed use buildings and would create some, some public space and some, some doors and eyes on the street, which will, as a result, make it safer. Um, the the L-shaped building in the northwest is a proposed market. This building here is a proposed mosque to further represent the demographics that um, are so prevalent uh, within this part of the city. These civic presences are existing buildings. They're clinics and part of the existing hospital. And as we phase out this neighborhood and, and hope to re-envision it, we hope to retain some of the existing fabric and just um, reutilize the structures. To the south, there's a, a Catholic church, and uh, you can see in the middle there, that's part of the hospital, and then two clinics to the north. And another strategy was to really provide some density on that lower highway on Dudley Road, A457, really to create some, some density to slow some of the traffic down, but also to um, really just help establish the place and, and possibly bring some of those people into the neighborhood rather than just simply passing by uh, quickly there. And then further, one more strategy that will be developed over the next couple phases is uh, the green space that we hope to wrap along the canal. To the northwest is World's End Park, which is a really lovely park. And we'd love to stretch that the whole way around and create a, a public runway, if you will, for running and for exercising, as well as just to create more of a active public space alongside of the canal to further that idea of safety as well as fun and uh, just something beautiful. And so in the next couple of phases, we will continue to wrap that ribbon um, adjacent to the canal. Within this 25 year plan for the Soho Loop neighborhood, you can see that a lot has been developed over these next 25 years. There's quite a bit more orange buildings proposed, which again is the mixed use and it's it's further fronting that ribbon. As you can see, it's, it's further wrapping around the neighborhood. And as it wraps adjacent to the canal, it not only provides this internal connection, uh, a public space, but it, it also provides a place for these neighborhoods to connect, connect to their neighboring contexts. And you can see through a series of pedestrian bridges as well as uh, vehicular uh, uh, bridges that it really promotes the idea of connectivity, which again uh, provides more safety and, and, and hopefully um, just a, a presence and uh, a, a means for this neighborhood to further flourish. Um, within the interior of this neighborhood, you can see the, the yellow uh, blocks developing. Those are primarily residential. Due to the nature of this neighborhood, uh, it's, it's easy to pack in the residential and really try and up the density there, um, which um, is profitable and it's safer and it, it helps to create a more walkable neighborhood and city. And all of these places are, they're able to walk to uh, amenities, to stores, to the mosque, to the market, uh, to the greenway, to the canal, and even to downtown Birmingham, which is just a lovely amenity. You can see here that more of that rambling hospital has been removed and some of the sea of parking has been further developed and to the south there, sort of in the middle of the, the neighborhood, you can see um, the red civic presence and this is a proposed theater, the Barker Theater, and I'll get into that further along in the presentation. So this is hopefully 25 years in and a lot will develop yet uh, within the next 25 years. This is the Soho Loop neighborhood's proposed 50-year plan. And 
honestly, it's it it feels night and day to, to what it was. The density is much higher. The streets are much shorter and much more walkable, which allows for more permeability and connect um, connections between neighboring contexts as well as within this. It feels much less like an island and feels just like packed full of amenities. Uh, you can see further on Dudley Road, A457 to the south, that the density has really been brought up along that, that street. In addition, during this phase along Dudley Road there, you could see this, this building that I have circled there. This is actually the proposed new market. Prior, we had it to the northwest. This is because there was a power distribution plant at this location and by the 50 year plan we would really like to see that redeveloped especially at such a pinnacle uh, transect between Dudley Road and Western Road and really a, a major entrance into this neighborhood at this point you get the view of that market which is a lovely amenity uh, for, the, for the neighborhood itself um, and then it gives you a view right to the Barker Theater uh, across from that plaza to the south. The building that was formerly the market to the northwest that I have circled there, that is now a proposed community center. And we'll see a proposed idea for that um, in the coming slides. But you can see further development along A4040. This is really important because this street connects us to the All Saints neighborhood and the whole way up to Black Patch Park, which consequently is right next to a light rail stop. And there's actually a bus transit that goes along this street here that I have um, lined in red. And this is essential because although it's, it's a 20 minute walk, it's a, it's a doable 15, 20 minute walk, to Birmingham along the canal. This just allows further possibility and potential for these neighbors in all of these locations. And actually to the west of this road I have outlined in red is a, is a elderly housing neighborhood. And, and this really allows them to connect to the park to the north, to the transit to the north as well as um, anywhere to the south. So it's really ideal that we pack the density at that location and, and use this as an opportunity to further bring people into the neighborhood. I believe this crude diagram of the streets really shows the potential of the connectivity there on A4040 to the northwest, as well as on the east side on Western Road towards the Jewelry Quarter, you can see that this uh, street that I have on the, the north of the neighborhood going from A4040 to Western Road, we've really tried to front this with the mixed use and just allow this to be a place for amenities and, and all of the residences just to quickly be able to walk within a quarter mile up to a half mile radius for all amenities, including all, all types of um, um, buses and, and light rail stops. And so within this plan, you can see that that rambling hospital has almost but completely gone away as it has moved west along Dudley Road into their new proposed building and has just really become this place where it can provide density along Dudley Road. This civic presence um, outlined here is a proposed administrative building for the hospital so they can retain presence in this neighborhood as they have for many, many years. And it confront that plaza along with the Barker Theater and the new proposed market. To the north, this existing building gets redeveloped into a learning center for the local neighborhood and the, the further um, Ideas for this redevelopment will be discussed further along. In addition, you could see the green ribbon that we proposed adjacent to the canal further connects the entire way, not isolating, but really creating a place to connect the neighboring context um, 
in addition to all of these new civic presences. Um, it's important to note just the location of each of these presences along all of these major streets, really just inviting people in and just marking this Soho Loop neighborhood as an important place, no longer an isolated island, but a, a place full of flourishing opportunities and amenities located brilliantly along the canal on the way to Birmingham. It's important to note too within this 50 year plan that we've really upped our density, which in essence allows for more mixed use housing and um, more opportunities for businesses and more walkable streets and safer neighborhoods and um, just opportunities for flourishing. Um, and also it, it allows for more transit opportunities as far as bus stops and light rail um, because it ups the demand. And, and so we've been able to procure a um, density of, a, of at least 80 um, dwelling units per hectare, which, is, which far exceeds um, what is required. And, and um, it just really allows this neighborhood to further reach the context and not just be an isolated island. Um, this is a transect diagram and it very quickly shows our proposed density, how, how we believe that should be laid out. You can see there to the south along Dudley Road, A457, the really dark shade of purple shows that we really want to build up density there along that really large street just to sort of slow down the traffic and introduce them to the neighborhood, uh, create some safety there, um, as well as just to really establish the, the presence of the neighborhood within there. And then you can see on the on the west along A4040, this is essential as this is the street that will connect this major highway all the way up to Black Patch Park to, uh, to the transit and to the All Saints neighborhood. Uh, so you can see the density is raised there. And then sort of this middle shade of violet fronts the canal and it really establishes a place and um, really tries to front that proposed green space. And then you can see that lighter shade, um, which is more of the residential um, layout. And so the, the density is a little less um, in that case. This is a larger scale of the Soho Loop neighborhood. Uh, to the south is Dudley Road and to uh, the east there is Western Road. And this is just really a blown up view of, of the civic center, if, if you will, and just really how we see our transect diagram and all of our proposed housing and mixed use um, working itself out with the neighboring context in the canal. You can see I have denoted there Number one being the proposed market within the 50 year plan. Number two is the existing hospital, which has been renovated for the administrative needs, fronting that plaza. And then number three being the Barker Theater, also creating a presence there on that plaza. This is an aerial perspective looking north on Western Road, and it really just describes the, the, the type of construction that we're envisioning, as well as the scale, uh, a nice three to four or five stories. Um, the walkable short streets, you can see the market there on the um, bottom right corner and the existing hospital building there. And then you can even see how close the context is and some of the pedestrian bridges that we're proposing to cross and really just to create that permeability and um, um, connections to the neighborhood and then further you can see the green space that we have wrapping around in conjunction with the canal. At this point in the presentation I'd like to uh, present some of the proposed buildings that some of um, my peers and classmates have proposed for specific buildings within the Soho Loop. So on the left side is the Barker Theater. I've mentioned that before. It's it's on Western Road and it's right off of Dudley, uh, Dudley Road to the south. Um, it fronts that plaza along with existing the existing hospital. The Barker Theater is located on the northeast corner of the plaza in front of the existing hospital. 
This building fronts the plaza along with the existing hospital building, multi-use commercial residential buildings, and the corner of the new proposed marketplace. Not only does it frame the plaza, but it acts as a wayfinding building through the Soho Loop. With the clock tower on the southeast part of the building, it acts as a node for traveling north and south on Western Road. The plaza south of the theater acts as an open plaza, typically, but can be rearranged for additional parking for large events at the theater or the marketplace. The theater itself has three main program uses, theatrical performances, black box performances, and classrooms. Not only will it be a place for people to enjoy and experience the arts, but a place to get involved and learn about the arts. On the right side of this sheet is the proposed marketplace. The marketplace is located at the southeast corner of the Soho Loop neighborhood between Dudley and Western Roads along the pedestrian greenway and the canal. The L-shaped building frames these two major roads faces the plaza across and the commercial street that connects the plaza to the pedestrian bridge. The building provides an indoor and seasonal outdoor market that supports trades and farmers by offering food stalls selling fresh local produce and other products like arts and homemade crafts. It also provides a restaurant with outdoor seating, a public green space, and a meeting hall in the second floor for both community activity and special events while enjoying the view to the canal. This is an example of the, the character and the charm and the scale of the streets that we envision for the Soho Loop neighborhood. This is an aerial perspective taken from the north side of Soho Loop towards the proposed community center and the mosque, and you can see World's End Park there, you can see the green space wrapping around the canal, and again, just provides an idea of the, the scale and the, the character and the charm of this, uh, this lovely neighborhood and just the walkable streets. These are two more proposed projects for Soho Loop neighborhood. On the left, the Learning Center. The Learning Center is a renovation and addition of it existing infrastructure previously a part of the Birmingham Midlands Hospital infrastructure located at the northeast corner of the Soho Loop neighborhood. While the hospital is being moved west across A457 and A4040, the vision for the Soho Loop neighborhood was to more successfully connect and utilize the charm and infrastructure in existence while being sustainably intentional. The Learning Center makes use of an existing brownfield, gardens and greenhouses, hydropower and irrigation from the canal, natural daylighting due to ideal building orientation, as well as attempts to connect the pedestrian greenway wrapping the neighborhood adjacent to the old canal loop. The building provides public gathering spaces for larger and small gatherings, and the program of the building provides assembly and maker spaces, as well as a kitchen lab to teach practical cooking skills, utilizing the gardens while also providing meals for neighbors in need. On the right side of this presentation sheet, you will see the community center. The Soho Loop Community Center and Market provides a visually accessible anchor for the north side of the loop along the canal and acts as a hub for entertainment, recreation, and commercial activities alike. The various small buildings each address their respective fronts and take advantage of all of the site's amenities. It is composed of the market building to the northeast, a restaurant and amphitheater along the canal to the north, and the community center building facing the green to the south. Lastly, here in the Soho Loop neighborhood, this is a, another street perspective looking down the street towards the mosque, and to the left there you can see the community center fronting the World's End Park, and again just the scale of the proposed neighborhood. This concludes our presentation of the urban plans for community building in Winston Green. Thanks for watching.